Good morning. God bless you, everybody. So glad to be here. Woo! We haven't been together in a minute, but come on and join me for a few minutes for Disability in the Church Live. Good morning, good morning. I know Nikki Tony's coming out here. Yes. Good morning, Salathia Payton, my publicity manager. Good to see you, my friend. It is March the 23rd. Feels like we haven't been out here together in a while. Glad to be here. Just listening to my worship music today. Yes, good to see you, Salathia. Look, as you come on out here, give me a shout so I can give you a good morning, especially for you. Yes. Salethia, can you tag Nikki Tony? I know she asked, was I coming out today? Tell her I'm out here live and in color. Yes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm just listening to some worship music before we get started. Listening to Elevation Worship. Hallelujah. Great is God's faithfulness. Yes, I'm going to share with you guys this morning. Y'all see, we don't have a guest with us. We're going to have the Holy Spirit to be our guest today. <laughs> Good morning, Imani. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you on social media. I saw you and Salathia last week. Y'all look so gorgeous, so handsome. Yes. And I hope y'all are tagging and sharing uh, from last week's fashion event. Yes, it's going to go bigger, bigger, bigger. I can tell. I can feel it. Yes, this is the day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, for those who are just coming in, maybe for your first time, I hope my music is not too loud. Let me know if it is. Uh, but if it is your first time coming, I'm Dr. Danita Edwards. I'm the founder of Birthright Kingdom Deliverance Ministries Incorporated, and I am the host of Disability in the Church Live, a social media platform. We have interviews. Yes, we do. We have biblical accounts, firsthand testimonies, addressing faith and disability. That is our charge to discuss faith and disability. What does that look like? Wow, God is good, y'all. God is good. Let me go out here just real quickly and thank everybody so much for supporting, so much for volunteering, so much for your donations for last week's all oh, just awesome event, incredible and amazing event. It was Marvel on the Runway, a fashion event for uh, girls, women, boys, and gentlemen with unique challenges. I had so much peace putting that together. And I want to thank you. We had some VIPs. Let me cut my music off a little bit. We had some VIPs. We had sponsors. We had some anonymous donations that came in. It was just wonderful, you guys. They kept me motivated because they were motivated. Yes. Oh, my gosh. We had people as far as Richmond. We had people as far as Jacksonville, Florida, coming in to participate and to help with that event. Yes. And for those who may not know, I know we've been advertising it a little bit. The first fashion event that we had, we hosted it with 15 girls and women with unique challenges. And so this year we expanded to 30 and we included some marvelous men, some marvelous boys, and they set it off. You guys better go back and take a look at the pictures. We had a videographer, so the video should be available next week. We're just going to get snapshots of that beautiful event. And I'm telling you, it was just, it was happening right here in Hampton Roads. It was happening over at the Signet Life Center in Chesapeake, Virginia. Shout out to my bishop, Bishop Kim W. Brown, Elder Valerie, our new pastor, Pastor LJ and Dr. Keisha. Shout out for people that they have employed at the Signet Life Center. They made it happen for us. 
Yeah, we transformed that gymnasium into a fashion experience. Cameras, lights, food, people, claps. Yes, all of that. Good morning, Nikki Tony. Good morning. Yeah, y'all keep tagging some folks. It's some folks who have never seen us out on Disability in the Church Live, and they want to know what is going on. And look, when y'all come out, Put where you're where you're coming out from. I know Salathia is right here in Hampton Roads. Imani right here in Hampton Roads. Nikki is across the world, y'all. <laughs> She's our cerebral palsy advocate over there. She's a champion. Uh, but there's a word today that we're going to share a little bit for those who are uh, in March. You're looking at your goals. You're looking at your assignment. And you're wondering, how can I get it done? I'm excited to tell you, you can get it done. Because believe me, I had to give a lot of thought to our fashion event. You all don't realize, you don't realize the details that are involved in it. And it's not just getting your finances in place. That was half the battle. How about dress rehearsals? How about um, the fittings? How about getting uh, clothing designers to line up with your message? How about we had entertainment Mr. Abuku 11 that came in from Richmond. We had Ms. Shauna Valentine as our MC. How about putting all those pieces together and then coming into one phenomenal event? And so sometimes when you look at those things, you feel like this charge is too, la too large for me. God, I can't do it by myself. But let me tell you, I am a witness that he will send you help. So I'm praying that the message that we're going to talk about today, you're able to glean some things for your own, for your own assignment. Yeah, that was Dr. Danita's charge last week. That was Miss Blake's charge la that last week and so many other associates who helped me, but you have your own charge. What is it that God is asking you to do? So the message that we're gonna look at today is gonna to be geared towards my experience and your journey. Mm. All right, Nikki Tony said, congrats for being on the news. Nikki says she's proud of us. Lord, it, I'ma just tell you, it was God. It was some work, Nikki, but it was totally God. He released favor for that Marvel on the runway event. And um, I could just go through the pieces and tell you where we thought we weren't going to have. And God gave us what we needed. Lord have mercy. I could, let me just run this down to you. I, look, I'm not even going to get started yet, just, but there are so many pieces that look like in the natural that this might not work, but God worked it out through this whole process. The one thing that I was asking God for, I said, God, when I come out here on Disability in the Church Live, especially when I have interviews, especially when I have interviews, something resonates in my spirit when they begin to talk. When the people that come on, y'all guests like Nikki and Salatheo and Slater, you know, when people come out and they begin to talk, I'm telling you, something resonates in my spirit that I'm in the right place at the right time. I know with my knower that this is God and that every interview is a building block for something else God is doing. So when I got ready to do this marvel on the runway, I asked God for that kind of confirmation. I said, God, you know how my soul is stirred up during the disability in the church live. I want my soul to be stirred up at the marvel on the runway. And so throughout last Saturday, I kept looking for God and I kept listening for God. I had a peace that surpasses all understanding, but I was looking for that flutter in my spirit. I was looking for something to resonate like it does with disability in the church. And you know, when it hit me, Nikki Tony, when I was looking at the pictures that were flooding my phone and flooding my timeline and flooding my email, there was one picture that gave me that sudden flutter of yes, of God, of amen, of hallelujah. It was a picture that you see behind me. Now you might not be able to see the whole picture. I can go back out there and repost it but there's a picture of a young man. His name is Joshua. He's standing in a white leather jacket, white pants, 
white sunglasses, and he's holding up a banner. He's holding up a banner that one of the parents, not me, it was a parent's idea to make this sign that says we can, no, 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 they marked out can, we will change the world. When I saw his stance, when I saw that sign, and I, when I saw the people lined up uh, around him in a semicircle, I saw Blake and I, I saw a few other people. I saw Quentin. When I saw them in that semicircle and I saw him holding that, that, that sign with that confident stance, something resonated in my spirit that I had hit the bullseye, that this was what God was announcing that we will change the world. Lord, I don't want to get too far into my message. I'm just excited about the King of glory who met us last Saturday. Hallelujah. And if you were there, I pray that something blessed you. I know we had people coming telling me, you know, I've never experienced anything like this. We had people who were out of state, who were on the Zoom, and they were just um, not only surprised, uh, but they were just, um, <laughs> I mean, they were in awe of what they saw their person do as they were coming down that runway. And Lord, you know what? I'm not supposed to spend this whole time talking about uh, last week's Marvel on the runway, but I do want to tell you that there are confirmations like that in our lives that we know, we know that we're doing what we're supposed to do. Okay, let me go back and read some of these little uh, messages, not little messages, these big messages over here. All right, so Salathia said this was his first time doing a fashion show. We are gonna do another one. Yes, sir, there's no doubt in my mind, bigger and better on next year. We're already looking at, uh, we're gonna get our venue together early. The venue is gonna be, he, uh, gonna be, um, uh, uh, sought after in 2023, I mean, 2024 to set us up for 2025. So yes, Alethe, we're doing it a third time. Yes, we are. It will be in the month of March again. Yes, it will. Two reasons we're lo looking at March again is because that is Blake Edwards' birth month. Y'all know Blake, my daughter, uh, diagnosed at birth with Down syndrome. So in honor of Blake, we will be hosting every year in the month of March. And not only that, in the month of March is Down Syndrome Awareness Day. So what better time to focus on changing the world through the Marvel on the Runway Fashion Show, but in the month of March. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So we're going to do that every March. Let me see. Yep. Selective said, when you come online, tell us where you're tuning in from. That's right. Thank you, Tony. We're, we're always proud of you. Look, let me tell you something about Tony. Nikki Tony, when I can't, let me tell you about Dominique. When I can't find something, especially links and things like that, Nikki Tony will find them for me. And so I go to my text and say, Nikki, where did you find that link? Or where did you find that picture? And she will shoot it right back to me. That's her thing. That's her thing. So good morning, Blake. I see some folks saying good morning to you, Blake. Imani, a prayer was answered for her last Saturday. Lord have mercy. Yes, Nikki Tony. Now, Nikki Tony, I've been, I mean, not Nikki Tony, Imani. I've been talking to Imani about coming out here on the Disability in the Church Live. And I believe she has something to say. And look, she says that a prayer was answered for her last Saturday. And I know part of that prayer that was answered uh, was the word reunited. Now, there may have been some other things that the Lord did for her, uh, but she put a testimony out about being reunited with family. Woo, you just never know what God is doing. He's putting us in position for blessings. All right, Miss Cherish. She's watching from Evansville, Indiana. Cherish is one of our uh, previous guests that we had on the show. Now, I'm not sure which month we had her, but I know she had an awesome testimony. I know that she continues to do the work of the Lord. I've seen her on Facebook challenging us to be real. Cherish is authentic. She's been challenging us. So thank you, Cherish, for watching us. 
Yep. She said, I would love to interview you on my podcast. Okay. All right. I will be there. I sure will. And look, we've got many people out here. You looking for a lineup, Cherish? You've got many people who come out here that I'm sure if you reach out to them, you'll get some yes, yeses, some yeses. Okay. Imani said it's also Cerebral Policy Awareness Month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for lifting that up as well. All right. Let me read some of these. Fashion shows are so great for our community. She says, I'm so grateful that I was able to participate in some here in her local area. And she says she can't wait to see all that we're going to do. Ah, and look, I don't know how many people were on that Zoom. When I looked out at one time, it was uh, almost 20 people. I wasn't in charge of the Zoom. I do apologize that right at the end, the Zoom lost some charge, lost power. Uh, and we're going to work on some things. We're going to go back and assess some things that we could have done better. One thing we definitely could have done better was our Zoom link. And so next time, maybe we need to look at someone um, who is totally attentive to that Zoom link, because this year, you know, we had people in different places, you know, videographer, we had our camera photographer, uh, you know, we had uh, people doing registration. We had a lot of people in different places. Some of them wore more than one hat. And so we weren't able to watch over the Zoom like we had initially planned. And I do apologize. I understand that there was some, uh, maybe some communication uh, couldn't hear as well. So we're going to go ahead and straighten that out for next time. But um, we'll get some videos out to you guys. We'll get some videos out. Okay. Look, y'all asking a bunch of questions. Look, it's, it feels like we haven't been here in a while. Yeah. So Salathia wants to know when we're going to start back Bible talk again. You know what? I got to get it back on my books, uh, uh, Salathia. We haven't been in Bible talk since December. I Let me tell you something real quick. I felt so bad. I'm telling the truth now. I felt so bad when Nikki Tony texted me and said, is disability in the live coming back? I felt so bad. Now, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't her. I believe it was the Holy Ghost. It, she said, is it coming back? And I was like, oh my gosh, are we that gone that far that somebody has to say, are we coming back? I said, oh my gosh, I've got to get back on. The truth is that I have been uh, a little uh, distracted doing other, not, not bad things, not bad things, but I've, I've put other things in places that last year I would have never, I would have never accepted, um, you know, speaking engagements. I would have never uh, accepted other things on my itinerary because last year, I remember people used to ask me, can I do a certain thing, you know, at 10 or 10 30? I said, nope, got to do my disability in the church live. But this year, somehow, when I looked at my obligations, I allowed some of my obligations to, to move into my disability in the church time. That's not responsible. That's not responsible. I'm coming back, y'all, because this word has got to go from coast to coast. And it can't go from coast to coast if I'm not in place. I was almost going to rhyme and say it can't go coast to coast if I'm not on my post. I would have told that to my young kids at school. All right, okay, so let's see what else, what other comments. Thank you for tagging people. Good morning, Blake. I hope you're saying good morning to some folks. I'm making sure I got all our messages before we get started. But I'm so happy to see you guys. I really am. I really have been missing y'all. I really have been missing y'all. I've got a few other things um, that I'm working on. Um, but please, Lord, please just help me get back to my disability in the church life. Even if it means, you know, pre-recording, I know how to do that, y'all. So there is no reason why I shouldn't have my disability in the church life. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. And so Cherish, she put her podcast out here. I know Nikki Tony as well has a podcast. And I pray that when people see these podcasts, I know Monique Dwell has a, a podcast. Um, hanging with Monty, uh, please go out and check out people's podcast. And, you know, it's, we're getting the good news out. We're getting the good news out. 
Okay. All right. So here, let me go ahead and pray. We're 21 minutes into our uh, time today for Disability in Church Live. You can share this out on your page, tag some people, send them to my website. Salathiel, when you get a minute, if you can find my website, uh, I know it's www, his grace, the number four, us.com. If you're able, Salathiel, you know, if you find that, just put it in the chat. Somebody might see this and say, you know what? I need somebody who is a real warrior for disability. And they might come to our page. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Lord, you know what? Hold on. Before I get started, y'all, look, let me thank, let me thank our sponsors, uh, Wick, Wick and Sip Candle Lounge. Yes, yes, they responded heroically uh, to sponsor us. Thank you so much, by LaFusion, Marquita, Bianca Brown, and Charles Brown. Thank you so much for allowing us to use by LaFusion Art Center for our rehearsals. Thank you so much, Unique Elegance, for giving. They donated dresses and gowns to people, not just borrowed. They let them have. Thank you so much. Uh, there's so many others. Tanya Dale of TD Couture. After the show, she gave the uh, outfits to the young girls. Thank you so much for just responding, you know. And we had a few other ones. Can't think of their names right this minute. Uh, Quentin, he found a company in Newport News who, you know, sponsored his clothing. I think it's called Brand New Brand News Clothing. It was it was awesome, y'all. It was awesome. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Express Yourself, Miss Danita. Lang, yep, found somebody with my same name. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you for donating gowns to us. Uh, and who, if I forgot anybody, uh, please put it in the chat. Yes. Oh, Pastor Frankie Branch, thank you so much, sir. He said, let us know how we can support. Yes. And look, y'all, I see the just work that uh, Pastor Branch, him and his lovely, lovely, beautiful wife are doing. Uh, I'm telling you, everything that they touch is turning to gold. Literally everything they touch is turning to gold. Go out and check his page out. Okay. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get started. I know it's been testimonies after testimonies about the Marvel on the Runway fashion event. I am just grateful. So grateful. Oh, good morning, Apostle. Good morning. Look, she's getting ready for her show, uh, hunt, hunt, 100 with the Hunters. But she stopped here to say good morning. So thank you so much, Apostle. Uh, she is our founder of Christian Women Alliance. Ladies, you looking for a sisterhood that is about kingdom and is about sisters being built up? Check out Apostle LaQuinla Hunter. Yes. And she's a powerful preacher too, y'all. Looking for a preacher? Pastor Frankie, you looking for a preacher that will knock the doors off, the church, the hinges, you better call Apostle LaQuinla Hunter. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, she is the truth. She is the truth. All right. So good morning, everybody. But look, let's go ahead and get started. And I believe, like I said, that my experience will help your journey. My experience in some areas will help your journey. So we're going to look at just a real quick word today. And look, if you have something that you want to comment, you have some encouragement, you just have something you want to uh, get off your heart, put it in the chat. And I will make sure I keep my eyes on the chat this morning. But good morning and just God bless you to everyone. So let's pray very quickly. And we're going to go right into just a quick word uh, today from Matthew, the 10th chapter. But Lord, we thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord God, for meeting us on today, God. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would always be pleased, God, that you would hear words that exalt you today, God. And Lord, we pray, God, against the spirit of fear. Lord, sometimes fear comes up against people when you give assignments, but we pray it down now in the name of Jesus. You don't give us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of sound mind. So we take hold of love of power and of sound mind this morning. We thank you today, God. We thank you for this gift of life. We thank you for your love that abounds in each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray, 
Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Yep. Okay, so let's get started. I want to talk for just a quick moment. This is the thought for today an offer that you can't refuse. Come on, come on. Yeah, you ought to put that right in the chat this morning. An offer that I can't refuse. And so I want to look just really quickly at Matthew, the 10th chapter, hallelujah. And I want to talk about the assignment that Jesus has given to the 12. And I want to tell you, when I read this assignment, I said, Lord, have mercy. This is one of those assignments that you know that you can't do it by yourself. Anybody with me in the chat? Has the Lord ever pricked your heart about something that you know, God, if your hand doesn't stay on me, there is no way, hallelujah. But I hear the Holy Ghost say that what he has given you will be a quick work. Y'all better touch your neighbor and say, it's about to be on. It's a quick word. Come on. This is an offer that you can't refuse. So let me look real quickly at Matthew, the 10th chapter. And it begins in verse one. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Now, let me stop right there this morning. I'm reading from the New International Version. But what jumped out just so quickly to me this morning was to heal every disease. Now, that jumped out at me because I thought about as a disability advocate, I thought about as a mother who has seen sickness come and go, flu and pneumonia and, and all these different things. And as you live some years, you begin to hear more about different diseases and sicknesses. And, and you like, Lord have mercy. The doctors are just giving all types of terminologies and just new names are coming up. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. Does, these, <laughs> does the list of diseases and sicknesses ever end? And even today, y'all, there's this new thing. We bind it now in the name of Jesus, but I'm just going to say it. They got this new thing out now. I've had so many kids in my classroom who go home fine, feeling fine. And all of a sudden, a high temperature hits them and they are out for like four to five days. And I say, Lord, have mercy. What kind of sickness? What kind of illness has entered the building so much so that one minute you're fine and the next minute your temperature is 103? Y'all better talk to me this morning because when I looked at Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse one, I said, you've given us authority over every, not just one or two, not just a certain classification, but he says over every disease. And so I began to say, well, God, if I'm only thinking you can heal certain diseases or certain impediments, then I've got to wrap my mind around every. So let me talk to you this morning. For me, that means maybe I have to dialogue a little bit more with people who have different diseases. I'm, I'm taking somebody out of their comfort zone this morning because a lot of times, we don't want to talk to people who have different ailments. A lot of times we don't want to talk to people who have a different type of disability or something that we don't recognize or something that we don't feel comfortable with. But in this season, look who's taking us out of our comfort zone. Because the first thing, if you've been called as a healer, if you've been called to allow the Lord to use your hands, that you can lay hands on the sick, You've got to know a little bit something about what's going on. You've got to know a little bit something about the viruses that are attacking people's bodies, known and unknown. Y'all better put that in the chat. God is revealing some things to us. Oh, Lord, y'all better go with me this morning. Let me talk for a minute as I'm including this every disease. Sometimes we're looking at the symptoms. And I'm just repeating what I've heard, but it makes so much sense. Sometimes we're looking at the symptoms. We're looking at what's on the top layer, but sometimes it takes the Holy Ghost to reveal to us what is the root of it. Y'all better come on and say amen. Now, I didn't come out here to talk about sicknesses and, and talk about diseases, but it's in the word. 
It was in the first verse that I read, but he has given us authority against the attacks known and unknown. Come on, put it in the chat. Known and unknown that are coming up against God's children. Let me stop right here. Let me go to my chat, y'all. See what people are talking about. Yes. <laughs> Apostle said, glory. Hey, amen, amen. An offer that I can't review, refuse. And see, the reason why this is an offer that we can't refuse is, one, we love the Lord. We love him, right? If you love him, put it in the chat. I love Jesus. More, we sing songs. He's more, he's the air that I breathe. He's, he's more than this world to me. We love him. I understand now why Jesus had to ask Peter so many times, will you feed my sheep? Will you feed my sheep? You know, you know, somebody was saying, why he have to ask him so many times? One, he asked him because sometimes we do change our minds. Y'all better come on and say, amen. Y'all better tell the truth. Sometimes God can ask you to do something on a good day. I'm thinking about myself now. God will ask you to do something on a good day. You like, yeah, God, let's do this. But as soon as the season get rough, you like, God, I know you didn't call me to do this. And he will remind you of the first time you told him yes. And then he'll come back again and say, if you love me, feed my sheep. Y'all better come on and say, amen. I thought about myself and that apostle hunter. I recently, um, I, I was about to uh, make a move. I'm gonna just say it. I was about to make a move from the school system. I said, I know my season is up. God got greater things he want me to do. And he told me to wait. Yep, he told me to wait it out. He said, I know and I see and wait. And so when it got kind of tough in the classroom, I said, Lord, you know what? You know, my back had started bothering. Remember that when I was having a lot of back problems? I was like, Lord, I can't, I can't carry this heavy weight physically with this back. I can't carry this weight mentally, emotionally. I can't carry it with this back. I know you can't be calling me to the three and four year olds because my back can't take it. But then the Lord reminded me, Apostle, he had asked me a couple of months ago on a good day. <laughs> he asked me on a good day, do you want to lead the class? I remember I was standing near the smart board and I was looking down. I don't know what I was looking at, but I remember the Holy Ghost asking me. And I remember because I had my head bowed and I said, yeah, I think I can. He reminded me when it got rough. He reminded me of my yes on a good day. I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking to somebody because my experience will help your journey. This is an offer that you can't refuse. And so when God gives you an assignment, he gives you authority. Somebody ought to put that in the chat. The first thing he gives you is authority. Come on, come on. So then in first verse two, still in Matthew, the 10th chapter, he began to tell who who, oh Lord, have mercy. Y'all thought, y'all y'all have, let me tell you what the Holy Ghost just said. He said, we have reversed the order in our thinking. We thought that we were called and then that we were anointed. But when I look at Matthew, the 10th chapter, that, that order is reversed. He gave the authority and then he called your name. Come on now. That what that tells me as apostle, what that tells me as Pastor Branch, all I have to do is step into it. You know, we're trying to pump up the anointing and pump up the authority and, you know, get our research and, you know, get our degrees and get ourselves together to step. He said, no, all you got to do, this work is so quick that I've given the authority first and all you got to do is step in it. Somebody say shift. All you got to do is walk in it because the first thing Jesus did was he put out the authority and then he started calling your names. In my mind, because I'm a person who's very visual and very descriptive, in my mind, I see it as a door that's open. In my mind, I see a door that's open and I see me as one of the 12 walking into it. Come on, you ought to say this next move is going to be so quick 
that I don't have to pray for the door to be open. I don't have to think about whether it's closed. I just have to walk in it. Come on, you better tell your neighbor. This assignment right here is a quick work. All you have to do is recognize the authority and walk in it. Y'all better come on and say amen. And so he begins to name the different disciples. Now, after he names the different disciples, when you look at Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses five on down, all he does is lay out the instructions. I mean, it's a whole chapter of do's and don'ts. He says, take your peace with you. Don't leave it. He said, if they don't accept it, shake the dust off. So he gives them a list of do's and don'ts. Come on, hallelujah. And I believe the reason why he gives us a list of do's and don'ts is because he knows that sometimes we have the propensity to mark time. Sometimes we stay in places too long and sometimes we leave too early. And so he gives us these little reminders about the peace that we're carrying. If something happens in the place that we're in, he said, you'll be able to discern a shift. Y'all come on and say, amen. Look at the instructions. Look at the instructions. He says in verse 16, he knows the problems we're going to encounter. He says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. He knows he tells us to be on guard. He gives us a reminder of the trouble that's going to be on the left and the trouble that's going to be on the right. He tells us, but he tells us in the midst of that, in the midst of everything, your peace will guide you into your promises. All right, let me stop right here. Make sure I haven't lost anybody. Yep. So Salethi said, yep, authority, known and unknown. Yep. Yep. You got it right, Salate. I'm just following you in the messages that he's leaving in the chat. This is so good to know. He has let us know that we are armed and dangerous in this season. If we read Matthew, the 10th chapter, there is nothing that will be disguised that will be able to trick us. It won't be able to torment us. We will be able to label it. We will be able to tell if it's God. We will be able to tell if it's the enemy. And I give God the credit this morning for doing exactly that. Oh Lord. He said, Amani said, we are on God's time. Yeah, God's timeline. You know what? And let me talk. It's the truth. I have stayed in places too long. I have belabored over leaving places for long because look, I look around and I say, well, God, they need me. So I can't leave. And so I continue to stay there. I continue, matter of fact, to the point where I've lost my peace, staying in a place, trying to perform because I'm looking at the situation around me and I'm saying, I can't go because they need me. Y'all better come on. Let me tell you, if there's anybody out here today who's belaboring over a thought of leaving because you say that the situation is so bad that, God, I can't leave in the midst of this, you ought to go back to God and say, God, is this you telling me not to leave or is this me looking at the people? And God will give you an adjustment based on what I see in Matthew, the 10th chapter. He tells me in Matthew, the 10th chapter, you're going to see, you're going to see persecution. You're going to see, you know, mothers not agreeing with fathers and brothers and sisters-in-laws and brothers. You're going to see all of that. Y'all better come on and say amen. But as Imani said, it is God's timeline. He understands your heart to do ministry so much. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and I'm not telling anybody to leave, but I'm just telling you from my experience, when I leave based on God's timeline, I get a burst of energy every time I've left. You know, I can be down and almost out. I can be like, God, I can't do this not another day. And when I realize that it's actually God saying you've done enough, and when I get to go and I give God the yes, I get a burst of energy like I have never seen before. Woo, God, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And even in money, when I've stayed too long 
And I've apologized to God and said, God, I've stayed so long that I don't know if I can get back in line. He is a redeemer of the time. Look, Salathia just agreeing with, he said, yep. Salathia said, yep, yep, because he knows your heart. He knows your heart. But he tells us all these things that are going to happen. He tells us in Matthew, the 10th chapter, don't be afraid. He says, look, just keep following me. Keep following my voice, following the vision. And so the final point that I want to lift up, I, I believe this might be the final point, what Jesus does with the disciples. Now, there's no confusion about this. Jesus gives them a target audience. I think a lot of times, Salathia, we might run with zeal, but we don't run with a target audience. He gives them target audiences. What verse was that? He sends them out with instructions. Verse six. So he's giving them authority, right? And now he's giving them the audience. Come on, come on, come on. He is aligning us with an audience specific to what we have. The purpose will drive us into being creative. The purpose will drive us into just wanting to know more about God and wanting to mo know more about the design of the assignment when he gives us a target audience. Like for uh, uh, Nikki Tony right now, I don't know if this will always be her target audience, but her target audience is people with or families of cerebral palsy. That's her target audience for now. What does he tell the disciples in Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse six? He says, go to the lost sheep of Israel. Look, he tells them, let me see. He says, verse five, he gives us these instructions. He says, do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go to the lost sheep of Israel. God was very selective about his appointment for the disciples. Now, later on, yeah, later on, yeah, when we read later on, Peter ends up branching out, goes to the Gentiles, but not at first. He was included in this 12. And the discovery is that sometime God will allow us to be so specific because maybe we're not mature enough yet to be branched out. And so he will identify your specific audience. Let me give you an example. Last time we did the Marvel on the Runway, we did it, what? It was, it was entitled Marvel on the Runway, Fashion Event for Girls and Women with Disabilities. Great move, God. God is awesome. God is awesome. God wanted me at that time to deal specifically with girls and women with disabilities. And here I am two years later. Now, God has allowed us to shift so that we have added men and boys. Come on. But he was selective. It wasn't my choice to just do the women and the girls. And now it wasn't my choice to add in the men. But let me tell you what happened. Gentlemen, parents who had sons wanted their sons to be involved. And so they came to me. I remember two years ago, a young lady, uh, Benita Boykins, if she comes out here and hears it, I'm gonna make sure you're involved in our next one. I remember she came and asked me, we were at a uh, aid another event if she watches this. She asked me, was I doing anything for boys? Was I doing anything for the men, for the males? I said, no, because I, I didn't feel like I was gonna go that way. I didn't feel like we were gonna add men. So I said, no, mm -mm. I felt like my audience was very selective. It was girls and women. And so here we are two years later, somebody else comes up to me, Salathiel for one, Jerry Fowler for another comes to me and ask me about the fashion event. They wanted to be a part of it. So what was I going to tell Salathiel? No, no, I love Salathiel. I was like, yeah, Salathiel, come on, come on and do this thing. Come on and show us your pose. And so here, since I have matured a little bit, <laughs> a lot of bit in my assignment 
the Lord said, okay, let's branch out a little bit. I've got some women, mothers and fathers who are weeping over their lost sons. So let's add in sons part now. But initially, and I'm just talking about how the Lord was so selective about the disciples and what he wanted them to do. So I think I'm almost done, but I want to tell you, go back and read Matthew, the 10th chapter and see if the Holy Spirit will show you clues on how he wants your journey to begin or where you are in your journey, because he gave them authority and then he told them who they were. You're yeah, you, you're on assignment. And then he gave them their audience. That's what he has done for them. And all we had to do was agree with what he was doing. And he was going to make it good because it wasn't us choosing the assignment. We didn't choose the assignment, Pastor Branch. You didn't choose it. Your assignment chose you. You better put that in the chat. I didn't choose my assignment. My assignment chose me. So you've got your authority. You've got those who are assigned. And then you've got your audience. I, I hope that something in that word today has inspired and encouraged you because I'm telling you, many people out here don't know their head from their tail. They are off and running all over the place. But what God is giving us, he's giving us heightened discernment so that we can discern not only the times that have been prepared for us to do things, but we will be able to discern the environments. We will be able to discern the motives of people. Y'all better come on and say, amen. I thought about, as I was preparing this, I thought about the bullseye and I said, God, you are so good. You are so good. I really thought about Target, the store, the store Target. Good morning, Pastor McPherson. Look, he said, I'm doing a good work. Well, praise the Lord, sir. I am in good company, sir. You as well. You are rocking the house over at Renewal. <laughs> you are rocking the house, sir. Praise the Lord. Y'all remember Pastor McPherson came out here and had a word that blew us away. Was that for our uh, Hope Conference? Go back and check it out. We got we to gotta rekindle that relationship, Pastor Kenneth. Yeah, we got to do that again. So I just want to encourage somebody because I looked at Target. I thought about Target and I said, God, you are so purposeful. And so what I did, Pastor McPherson, I actually looked up the origin of the store Target. And I looked at it and I found that the person who started Target, it started as a different name. It started as the Dayton Hudson Corporation. And I felt like, you know, sometimes, um, you know, we do things when we're new, new in ministry and, you know, we're maturing. And so when I looked at Target, Target has now become a brand. But the thing that I realized about the store Target, it is a passed down assignment. It was a passed down idea. It came through the first fall. It came from the father. And then I think I wrote down that it came from, uh, was it his son, Nelson? So yeah, it started with the man's name. His name was George Dayton. He was a Presbyterian, y'all. And the thing about him, I, I loved him. I don't even know him, but just reading some of his bio, he was so purposeful in how he started that store. Dayton Hudson Corporation, now known as Target, he desired one that he didn't have affiliations with people who, <laughs> how can I say this? He didn't have affiliations with people who drank alcohol. He wasn't open. His store wasn't open on Sunday. There were just some, some criteria that he used to start the store. And so when he passed away, he passed it on to his son, Nelson. Nelson abided by those same rules, no alcohol. He didn't even broadcast, you know, on the newspaper if, if they dealt with alcohol. I mean, even the literature was so specific to him. Oh Lord, that was so good for my spirit. It was, he was, 
I ain't even gonna say it. But anyway, he it was so godly to me. I loved it. I love oh rebirth. I apologize, Pastor McFerrin. I didn't put you at, at renewal at <laughs> rebirth church. Praise God. Praise God, Pastor McPherson. You rocking it at rebirth. I had the rewrite. <laughs> I had the rewrite. My apologies. So yeah, I looked at that target. So he passed it down to Nelson and then he passed it down. Nelson passed away, died, passed it down to his son, Donald. And so, you know, the name now changed to Target. But here's what I thought about. I thought about for us being ministry minded, him, there is a, a precedence that we set as a person of integrity even as the disciples in Matthew the 11 chapter, there was certain things that they know weren't right. Certain things that we, a lot of people call it religiosity right now. We're putting religiosity on everything, but some of it was just called holiness. Some of it was called godly intent. Some of it was called watching the motives of my heart, that my heart remained pure. Some of it that we're doing, I identify with it as being Habakkuk. I, keep the vision pure. I know I'm going in another direction, but I love the mindset of the founder of the first target. Yeah, it was under a different name, but the principles, Lord have mercy. And so in, in our journeys, y'all, we want to produce things that are integrous. We want to produce things that have integrity. And if they have your name on it, they ought to be integrous. Lord, y'all better help me. And so when I looked at Target, I looked at the bullseye, I said, God, you're still working. You're still working. How is it that I can read about the store Target and I can see God lining up legacies of what he wants to do? Yes, yes, yes. He wants to line up legacy. It won't just be your good work, but for me, my desire is like the store target that I pass down what I'm doing from generation to generation. Look, we need to stop thinking so small. Let me go with this for a minute. I only got a couple of moments, but we need to stop thinking so small that what we're doing is only for our city or it's only for me to fulfill my assignment. How about the things that, that show me in, in Matthew, the 10th chapter, and with the store target, it was about providential. It was about expanding. Hallelujah. It was not just about life for me, but it was life for my family. It, it went deeper than what I can do. It was about what is the generation going to do behind me? Yeah, Pastor McPherson got it. It's about integrity and character. It is about the moral fiber of who you are. When somebody sees your event, when somebody sees your activity, when somebody sees your podcast, when they read your bio, will they see that you maintain these godly principles? Lord have mercy. That's when you know you hit the bullseye. That's when you know you've done right by God and the assignment that he has given you. That's when the lost sheep will no longer be lost. Come on. Good morning, Nisha. Good morning, Lord. Thank God for Nisha just joining. Thank you, Nisha, for the good work that you are doing. It is about legacy. God, Lord have mercy. Nothing that we do will last, but what we do for God will last for generations. When I look at Birthright Ministries, yeah, I might pass away, Salathiel. It might not be called Birthright Ministries anymore, but it might be called something else. It might not be Marvel on the runway, fashion event. But if I leave a legacy for somebody else, come on, which is my intent, it might be named something else, but it will still have the history. It will still have the principles. It will still have the godly effect. And I know I've taken a turn with this, but I'm telling you, we're thinking too small and I'm guilty too. I'm thinking Marvel on the runway is just a one day event. When I first started thinking about it, I was so closed minded I thought it was a one day event. They get off that runway, they pack up their dresses, they pack up their tuxedos, 
and we're off to something else. No, he says, no good thing will I withhold from you who walk upright. What we're asking now is that God, every person who participated financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically, come on, even the devil was upset with fashion on the runway. Everybody who had a stake in fashion on the runway, that they would experience something just for participating. Come on and say, amen. I want not just me to experience that new thing, but now I want you to experience that new thing. Come on, come on. Good morning, Minister Regina. I know we're running out of time. We're right here at the end. You're gonna go ha have to watch that repeat because I keep saying it. This right here in Matthew, the 10th chapter, God, Jesus is giving us an offer now that we can't refuse. You can't refuse it. He is making it so easy for us now to step in to the gifts that have already been given. Come on, come on. I'm thinking about again about the Target store. Look, if the, if the father hadn't started his business, he made it so easy that he stepped in it. Come on. Then his son can step in it. Oh, all it did was increase the billions. All I kept seeing when I was reading it, Pastor McPherson, McPherson was the first billion. Then I saw the, the 10 billion. Then I saw the 36 billion. All they had to do was step in it because the authority had already been given. Lord have mercy. All Grayson did for his family was share the wealth. Lord have mercy. That's a word all by itself. All he did was share the wealth. He didn't have to get new money. God gave him money. All he had to do was pass it down from generation to generation. Lord, let me read my chat. We at times in now. Good morning, Minister Regina. Good to see you. Lord have mercy. Yep. This is an offer that we cannot refuse. Jesus himself, Lord have mercy. Mm, there's no expiration date on it. The only expir expiration date that, um, that exists might be when, when, when we breathe our last breath and then we go on to glory. <clears throat> but there's no expiration on this authority. There's no expiration on the, on the audience. There's no expiration on the assignment. Come on, come on. Get in there before the year's end. If God has been speaking to you to do something, come on and do it. Get it right. Lord have mercy. Okay, y'all. So let me see. Leaving a legacy. I'm reading in, in our community. It's about community. That's what Nikki Tony's doing. That's why she puts out here that we have 187 people, you know, who have joined the Nikki circle. That's why she keeps identifying it with different quotes. You ought to share your testimony. That's why, because it's about community. Oh, Pastor McPherson said it was the same thing with Henry Ford and his grandchildren are living on what he did. Come on. It's not, let me put this out here. I know I might have, uh, you know, some Caucasians, uh, my friends out here right now, you know, I love you, love you, love you. Here's one thing that um, uh, sometimes African-Americans say, I'm so sorry we say this. Y'all know what I'm about to say. We say, sometimes we say this in ignorance. Um, the Caucasians were doing it all along. Well, don't we say that? Y'all better come in. Come on, come on. Let me tell you, who else was doing it all along? God. God was doing it all along. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He'll order your father. He'll order your children and your children's children. Stop saying that the Caucasians were doing it all along. God was doing it all along. He's a generational God. Mm. Woo. So Lathan said, check out our social platform. You won't be disappointed. Yep, yep, yep. But anyway, I pray that this word blessed you today. And I'm going to pray real quickly. Thank you again so much. Oh, Lord, the harvest is now. It is ripe. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, thank you. Lord, we thank you for this word today, God. We thank you that we're building bridges. Thank you, God, that you've given us the authority. You've given us the assignment. Yes, you've given me the assignment. 
and we're going to walk in it, Lord. It means life and death. We're speaking life over our assignments now in the name of Jesus, that generations will know our name because we knew your name and we are employed by you. So thank you, Lord. Take this message to another level. Every hearer that responds, be anointed for this new task. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, God bless you. And again, Pastor McPherson, I apologize for saying renewal. It was the first re <laughs> that came up in my mind, but God bless you at rebirth. Sir, you're getting younger and younger as I'm looking at you on video. Ha! Minister Regina said, thank you for the example. Salatha was reminding you that we're here at 11 o'clock. We're signing off. We'll be back again next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern time for Disability in the Church Live. Catch us on YouTube. Pass the word that God is doing something new with his people over here at Birthright. All right. I love y'all to life. Y'all go out and have a blessed day. I got a few more places I got to be. We're going to an Easter egg extravaganza. <laughs> y'all be blessed. Love y'all. Love y'all. We will change the world. My gosh. Bless you, y'all. Bless you.